The second quarter of the season was when Paolo Bancaro became him. That's capital H, capital I, capital M. Plus, what's in store for the next 20 or so games for the Orlando Magic? Look to all that on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is January 25th, 2024. My name is Philip Rossmerich. I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we will discuss how Paolo Bancaro became him. Him. Just, just him. Just him. We're going to talk about Paolo Bancaro's second quarter of second quarter and really first half of the season and why that is the greatest victory the Magic could have. Plus, we'll dive into what to expect in the third quarter of the season, both on and off the court. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. First, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for your first deposit match of up to $100. It, you know, I like to take a moment at the quarter break of every season. There's no real break, but at the quarter mark of, of, of the season and assess where we've been over the last 20 games. Um, obviously last week, last Wednesday, we hit the 41 game mark. We are officially past the midpoint of the season and we have a nice little break here. So let's spend today thinking about where this magic team has been and where they're going to go through all the machinations, through all the different things and, and all the different concerns that everybody has. And there's plenty Did trade deadline tour yesterday, do another trade deadline tour tomorrow. Um, through all of these things, I think it's really important to remember what the goal of the season is. Um, you know, whether it's a preseason goal, whether it's a goal that evolves, honestly, the Magic's objectives this year have not changed. And they are still on track to achieve. Them. You know, for as much as we want to be frustrated by starting the year off, what, 13 and 4, uh, going, uh, what is it, nine and uh, nine and sixteen over the last twenty five games. As much as we want to, like, try and figure out why this imbalance, and we're going to get to some of those things in, in a little bit here. Um, what what are the ultimate goals for the Orlando Magic this season? Ultimately, we want to see this team make the playoffs, play meaningful basketball, compete and succeed, and make the postseason. Um, I have, I, I, I know, I have said this, and I think people are generally tired and annoyed with me saying this, but once again, this year is not about this season. It's about these small things, but it's about growing and developing into something more. It's about building into something more. And so I want to make sure this is, this is abundantly clear. The magic's goals have not changed. The magic's objectives, the magic, what the magic are trying to accomplish have not changed. At the end of the day, the goal at the beginning of the season was to really get a sense of who this team is, what this team can be, lay down that foundation, and start winning more seriously. But it wasn't necessarily to, it was, it was still to see where this thing takes us. I don't think the Magic have a directive to necessarily make the playoffs. I, I would think they do, and I would say they need to make the playoffs. I, I No play, play in tournaments, fine, win it get to a seven-game series. Seven-game series is really important. But ultimately, they needed to know, coming out of this season, just what their ceiling might be. And so while we named our first quarter MVP, or I named my first quarter MVP, I think people uh, or, uh, people on my site, that people on Online Magic Daily disagreed with me on this, the first quarter MVP to me was Jalen Suggs because the energy 
And just defensive identity he gave this team was really, really important. But we all know who the two most important players on this team are. We all know what's ultimately going to matter and, and which two players and their development is going to take this team to whatever its ceiling might be. And so for that reason, there is only one choice for the MVP of the first half of this season. There is only one player we can pick. Only one player who defined this season and frankly will define the next five seasons for the Orlando Magic. In these last 20 games, Paolo Bancaro became an all-star. He came to him, whatever cliche you want to use for it. The Magic have not had a player with the creation and shot-making ability of Paolo Bancaro in a very long time. This is not Aaron Gordon sometimes being able to do it. This is not Aaron Aflalo being forced to do it. This is not Vince Carter fitting into a team with a superstar and Dwight Howard. This is... It's Tracy McGrady level stuff. And, and that's an unfair standard to hold anyone to because it's not quite as good as T-Mac was. But Paolo Bancaro is doing things for the Orlando Magic that they have not seen for 20 years. The kind of player the Magic have not had, and frankly, the kind of player the Magic have been seeking for 20 years. And Bancaro proved it time and time again throughout the first half of the season. In the first half of the season, so that is through Wednesday's game against the Atlanta Hawks, Dan Caro averaged 22.9 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, and 4.9 assists per game. All of his numbers jumped from his historic rookie season. That included a shooting efficiency, which jumped from jumped to 45% from floor and 35.2% from deep. During the season's second quarter, that is December 8th through January 17th, Dan Caro averaged a robust 25.4 points per game. 7.3 rebounds per game, and 5.1 assists per game. That included his first career triple-double, a 32.10 rebound, 11 assist effort in the humongous undermanned upset win over the Denver Nuggets, and also included his first two career 40-point games. Again, Aaron Gordon was able to score 40 points on occasion, but he did not score with the level of consistency that Bancaro scored with over the first half of the season. And... Bancaro continually got better. As more guys went out, as more guys got hurt, Bancaro stepped his game up. And in fact, watch, you know, I don't want to get too deep into this argument because, and, you know, we'll talk about it next week because All Star Reserves will be coming out. We're already being, we're already pitting Paolo Bancaro against uh, uh, Scotty Barnes. Um, that, that seems to be the favorite debate among the NBA internet right now uh, for the All-Star game. And look, Scotty Barnes having a fantastic season. I don't want to take anything away from him. Scotty Barnes is not seeing the double teams, is not seeing the attention. Frankly, Scotty Barnes has probably had better surrounding cast than Paolo Bancaro has for a good chunk of this season. Paolo is carrying this Magic team in a lot of ways. And yeah, the record hasn't been great. And if Paolo ends up missing the All-Star game, it'll be because the Magic slid too much. Their record was just not quite good enough. That's also a reason why Scotty Barnes should not be an All-Star as well. You can't use that argument. You can't use that argument against Paolo and for Scotty Barnes. So, you know, again, I don't want to get too deep into that debate. Both players are all both players are having all-star caliber seasons. We'll let you decide who who should get in. We'll see what the coaches do next week. Paolo Bancaro, though, has stepped his game up and has become a true star. The fact that we can talk, uh, and frankly, the fact that we believe Paolo Bancaro should be an all-star in his second season is frankly an amazing thing. It is not something we should discount or discredit or ignore or forget. This second quarter of the season, this first half of the season, Paolo Bancaro left no shadow of a doubt of his stardom and his star potential. 
And now, obviously, it is on the Magic to make the most of it, both to develop him and give him all the opportunities to succeed, but also to surround him with a team that is capable of winning. And that's ultimately the big questions that we're going to have for the third quarter of the Magic season. We're going to get to some of those questions coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word for our friends over at Grammarly. Look, I write a lot. Um, you know, I, I actually subscribe to Grammarly. I get those weekly reports, and it's a, and and even those reports say, "Phil, you write a lot." Well, we all need a little help. I am self-edited. It's very, very difficult. I miss typos. I miss things all the time. Until I got Grammarly, and frankly, until I even got Grammarly Premium, I didn't even realize how much I was missing, even a good writer, or I think I'm a good writer, maybe I'm not, I don't know, even a good writer like me needs a second pair of eyes. And that's where Grammarly, that's what Grammarly does. When it comes to writing, Grammarly is there to support you from start to finish. For more than 10 years, Grammarly has been powered by AI technology you can trust to help you across all the places where you write the most. And now Grammarly helps you do even more. With one click, you can easily uh, you can easily brainstorm, rewrite, and reply with suggestions based on your context and goals so you can improve productivity for you and your teams. When you're stuck with writing at work, Grammarly can help you get started with ideas, outlines, and even tips. If you need to polish your writing, Grammarly can help you paraphrase and rewrite to be more concise instantly. All you have to do, uh, all you have to do is start writing and Grammarly will do the rest. So if you need to draft an important email and don't know where to start, Grammarly has suggestions to jumpstart your writing. And the best part is it's free to use. So start being more productive at work today. Go to Grammarly.com slash podcast to download for free today. That's Grammarly, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash podcast. I'm a Grammarly user. I enjoy, I really use it and it helps me out a ton. I know it will help you out to check it out again today at Grammarly.com slash podcast to download for free today. Today's episode of Lockdown Magic is also brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Daily fantasy games can be so confusing. There's so many out there. They have these confusing salary caps. They have these confusing point systems. You want simple. Simplicity is king. And Prize Picks couldn't get any more simple. All you have to do is pick two to six players and project whether they will get more or less than their prize picks projection. So if you think Paolo Bancaro will score more than 23 points against the Memphis Grizzlies on Friday, that's all you have to do is say he will score more than 23 points. It's really that easy. With basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections too across football and basketball with their special leagues. These are picks like LeBron and Travis Kelsey had a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made and receptions. You can even check out some prize picks, favorite players and celebrities, see who they're picking and take and take their side as well. Prize picks is truly daily fantasy made easy. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. That's two ends there. And use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match of up to $100. Price $100. Prize picks. Is daily fantasy made easy? We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Be sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, like me, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel today. So we are now in the third quarter of the season. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the countdown's on. We're taking a break from the trade deadline tour today. We will be back on the trade deadline tour tomorrow. I will not, I will just tease and say it's another very favored uh, uh, target for the Orlando Magic. We will talk about all of these players um, very, you know, we'll talk about, we're going to try, I'm going to try and get to as many of these players as I can before the trade deadline, which is now officially two weeks away. So obviously there's a lot of pressure and it's, you know, the first quarter of the season, everyone's just kind of getting comfortable. We're figuring out who the team is. Second quarter of the season is when 
you really begin to establish who you are. Maybe you have to face some adversity. You see how you come out, come through with that. And, and obviously the magic had a lot of adversity to face. They had a difficult schedule. They struggled with it. Again, they're nine and 16 in their last 25. That is a 30 win pace. The magic do have to be better. Let's not kid ourselves. The third quarter of the season though, is when the playoff picture really does begin to crystallize. We see the trade deadline. We see the all-star break. We get that last big deep breath before we get the sprint to the finish. Um, and so this is where you start to separate, where teams start to separate themselves, where teams start to make their run. It's, it's moving day. Uh, if you, if you watch golf, the third round is the day where the leaderboard really begins to take shape. And so obviously I've been saying this all year. Um, we are focused on April. We are looking ahead to April. We want to know who this magic team is and whether they have enough to win in April. That's what matters is to play in the playoffs and next 20 or so games, obviously the next 41 games are going to go a long way to determining what kind of playoff picture the magic are in. Now we do know the schedule is going to lighten up and that is certainly one of the considerations that Jeff Weltman and and his group are going to be considering when they look at this team. Uh, It's why I've said these next seven games leading to the trade deadline are probably the most important seven games of the season. Uh, The schedule is manageable despite six of these seven being on the road. You get some good opponents like Phoenix. You get good opponent like Minnesota. You play Miami one more time. But then you get some eminently winnable games and games you should take care of, like Friday at Memphis. No offense to our friends at, at Locked on Grizzlies. Like the Pistons. Like the Spurs. These are games the Magic must win. And so right now, this next seven games about building confidence and proving to everyone like, hey, I know we just went through our little swoon, but we have enough to compete. You don't need to make drastic changes for this group to be successful and to go where we want them to go. That's a lot to ask for seven games. Maybe seven games isn't enough to make those conclusions. Maybe some of those conclusions are already made. Who knows? But this is the, this is the, these next 20 games are the time to really begin to shape and clarify the team's short-term future as much as the long-term future. For the first time in a very long time, probably the first time since 2010 or 2011, the Magic are potentially buyers at this deadline. The Magic should be proactively looking for ways to improve this team. They, For the first time in a long time, they are not at their ceiling. They're not in the championship hunt. They are a team that is truly looking to grow. A team that is looking to get better and weighing what to sacrifice in order to do so. And that's the big question we have for the third quarter of the season. Are the Magic going to get into this playoff chase? They've been in the playoff race. They're obviously still in it. They're game behind. You know, I didn't check to see if Miami beat Memphis. Maybe I should do that real fast. Give me a sec to check that. Um, You know, Memphis beat Miami. So there you go. The Magic are a half game behind Miami for seventh in the East. They're a game, uh, I think, uh, they're game and a half back of Indiana for uh, for for six. They're in this race. Like, yes, they have fallen hard. You know, home court advantage in the first round, probably not happening this year. Um, not impossible, but probably not happening. Um, this is a team that is still that still has a lot to play for. And everything that they do has to be focused on these goals. Look, I I will say this again. I I will say this unequivocally. The Magic can be in the play-in tournament. That's fine. Seven, eight game, whatever. They cannot lose that play-in tournament. They have to be in a seven-game series. The most important thing the Magic can do this year, the most important thing that can happen for this team is to get into a seven-game playoff series. That is the only goal that matters. I'm not I'm not here to tell you that the season is a failure if they don't do that, um, but they will lose out on a major growth opportunity if they don't. And that's sort of what they're in danger of having happen. Obviously, the playing tournament can be a little bit of a coin flip. You, you don't know. Uh, but they have to get to that seven-game series. That's all that matters. And so ultimately, you know, again, you don't sell out to get there. We have bigger goals in mind, but... Ultimately, what Jeff Weltman and his group, and ultimately what the Magic organizationally, not just Jeff Weltman, but the players, the coaches, everyone, 
has to be asking themselves over the next 20 games, what are we doing or what do we need to do to get to that level? To get to being a playoff team, not a postseason team, not a play-in team, a playoff team. If they could get to the sixth seed, great. Let's not even bother with the play-in tournament, please. That would be an amazing. Save me some money because I don't want to travel for a 7-8 game. I'd love the 7-8 game to be at the Kia Center. That'd be great too. Um, I, I think, honestly, the play-in tournament is valuable for giving young up-and-coming teams a chance to experience playoff pressure and playoff success. You know, again, we saw what, honestly, like, I know people clown Patrick Beverly for dancing on the table and all that, but that was really valuable for Minnesota. That was really good for them um, in the end. And, and, and again, I'm not against being in the 7-8 game and trying to win that. I'm not against hosting a, a play-in tournament game either. Like, let's bring that playoff vibe. Let's show this team what a playoff atmosphere feels like. And let's see how this team responds to playoff pressure. But ultimately, a seven-game series is going to teach this team, and especially teach Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner, what they actually need to get better. If I'm a little bit skeptical um, of the Magic making a move at the trade deadline, it's because I honest, aside from shooting and maybe some point guard, some solidity at the point guard position, I don't think even the Magic know what they really need yet. Um, you know, again, I, I think they're not completely willing to trade Wendell Carter because he's super valuable to the team, but they don't know if he's a playoff center yet. And, and you know, they don't know if that works in the playoffs. They need to start figuring this stuff out. And that's what should be driving and motivating this team the rest of the season. The playoffs are all that matters. They've got to start. They got to win, obviously. They got to get better. They got to get healthy. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, but they've got to drive themselves into the postseason. And obviously, these are big questions that have to do with the, the trade deadline in a couple of weeks. These are big questions that have to do with, with a lot of things off the court. And, and, you know, on February 8th, we are going to learn a lot about this team, about what their ultimate goals are, about how quickly they can, how quickly they feel they can rebuild or whether they feel the heavy lifting is best done in the summer. Maybe that is the case. Um, but there is, there are a lot of questions to answer here in the third quarter of the season, and it all starts with the Magic taking care of their business on the court and showing us whether they can get back to the level they were at in November. That obviously has to do with health. So we'll talk a little bit about what the Magic talked about at practice on Wednesday as the Magic tried to get healthy. Once again, we'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Hungry Root. Look, we're all trying to eat a little healthier here in 2024. Hungry Root is here to rescue you from short-lived resolutions by making meal planning easy and nutritious. I know I'm always looking for healthy food options. Uh, I've tried several meal prep services. Sometimes I get bored with them. We're all trying to do our best. What we really want is to build healthy habits that won't disappear by February and Hungry Root can really help you do that. Hungry Root is the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality food delivered to your door. They've got healthy groceries and simple recipes all in one place. All you do is you take a fun, short quiz, and Hungry Root, Hungry Root will get to know you, your goals, and how you like to eat. They'll ask what flavors you like, which kitchen appliances you use, and more. And then they'll keep your needs and preferences top of mind and start building your cart with delicious recipes and all your grocery needs for the week. Hungry Root will recommend recipes and groceries based on your taste. Take their suggestions or choose anything you want. They've got fresh produce, high-quality meat and seafood pantry staples, healthy snacks and sweets, and so much more. Hungry Root goes beyond your weekly grocery haul with thousands of easy recipes that actually put your groceries to good use before they get forgotten in the back of your fridge. The best part is Hungry Root follows a simple standard. It's got to taste good, be quick to make, and contain whole, trusted ingredients. Spend less time meal planning, shopping, and cooking, and more time enjoying healthy food that you'll actually love with Hungry Root. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Locked On NBA, Locked On NBA and Locked On Magic listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash locked on to get 40% off your first delivery 
and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash locked on. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. So the Atlanta Magic uh, had the day off Tuesday. Usually that's usual for back-to-back. They get practice Wednesday. They get practice Thursday. All very, very good things. Very, very, like, good things to be excited about. And obviously, I think we're all, you know, I think we saw these three days off as a chance for this team to catch their breath. Um, Look, uh, you know, uh, by opponent win percentage, the Magic have played the third toughest schedule in the league. They've They've played Boston three times already. They played Milwaukee two times. They have played, they have had a very difficult schedule, and especially this stretch of games has been particularly difficult. Um, you can go back and listen to our pod back in August when the schedule came out. I am sure I said it then. I've continued to repeat it to everyone that I've talked to. The magic really just had to get to the all-star break and then see where they're at and and build up momentum. Certainly back in August, I was concerned. I had the magic actually in the 9-10 game and uh, my preseason predictions. I was a little bullish on this team. I was like, I, you know, I think there are some very, you know, there's clear needs. We can see them um, that they needed to get better at, that they didn't necessarily improve on. There was a lot to get to, but I was still very confident that if they were in, if they're hovering around the play-in race, if they got to the all-star break, they would have their chance to pick up some steam and, and finish the season strong. We still have an eight-game homestand coming up. We still got two games against Memphis. One's coming this Friday, obviously. Um, two games against San Antonio. One's coming on Wednesday. Three games against Detroit. One's coming one week from Sunday. Uh, we've got uh, two ga- uh, uh, three games against Charlotte still. One game against Washington. There, there, one game against Portland. There are a lot of, at least on paper, very, very winnable games. Now, this next seven-game stretch is going to be very tough. Six games on the road. One home game is Phoenix. The Magic should, uh, the Magic should go four and three in this stretch. And it's going to be really important that they start building some positive momentum and start building some confidence to get there. But the only way they're going to get there is by being healthy. And that is, if there's a reason to be optimistic, if there is a reason to think, okay, the Magic are about to figure some things out or the Magic are about to get themselves together, just look at Sunday's win over Miami, which they won 105-87. to That was the first time that they had their opening night starting lineup on the floor since October 31st. And they looked darn good. They they thrashed the Heat. It was one it was I think it was the third best defensive performance of the season. The fact that it was then followed by the worst defensive performance of the season shows you how fragile this thing is and frankly how much the Magic missed Markel Fultz and missed Jonathan Isaac. You know, their absences were very much felt although I think Cleveland did things that are very much part of the flaw in the Magic defensive system that, again, we need to see in the playoffs get exposed so that everyone understands, okay, this is how we need to adjust and tweak things to 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 be effective, be an effective defense in the playoffs. Again, that's why we need to make the playoffs. For this Magic team to have success, though, they need to start getting these healthy bodies back. You know, Franz Wagner getting back to the swing of things. He's played two games now. Uh, Wendell Carter, Marco Fultz being back in that starting lineup. That lineup's only played 97 minutes together across five games. They have a positive net rating. Um, you know, you look at the most used lineup for the Magic. Um, it is the Anthony Black Oka Patadze starting lineup. They played 254 minutes across 21 games with a plus six net rating, 111 offensive rating, 1049 defensive rating. That original starting lineup has played 97 minutes across five games with a 1099 offensive rating and a 934 defensive rating. You can see offense is a problem, but this Magic team can play elite defense. Uh, can play uh, can play at an elite level defensively, and I think that's where the Magic want to get back to. Wednesday's practice, you know, again, you have a couple of days of practice, so you can go maybe a little heavier. But honestly, Wednesday's practice felt like it was still kind of a recovery day. It was still about making sure everyone is getting their legs back under them, keeping guys healthy. These this stuff still matters. And so Wednesday was spent doing all that, plus tightening up things, tightening up the turnovers, tightening up the rebounding, tightening up the defense, which which has slipped a little bit over the last 10 games. The Magic needed a break. They needed a breather. They've been going hard. You know, I don't think they've had consecutive days off uh, like this in quite some time. So this week is a chance to take a deep breath and you hope 
that when the Magic get to Memphis on Friday, Memphis defeating Miami tonight. So, you know, don't sleep on the Memphis Grizzlies. I know I just kind of counted them as a win a couple minutes ago. Don't quite sleep on them yet. Um, when they get to Memphis, that's going to be a team that's going to fight hard, but it's a team the Magic should beat. It's a team the Magic should win, and I expect them to come out focused and ready to go. And I expect a strong defensive effort. I know Jaron Jackson used a handful, but I expect a strong defensive effort when the Magic get to Memphis, and I expect this stretch to be a really strong one for the team. Um, it's going to be a challenge, no doubt about it. Um, no doubt that this is going to be a huge challenge for the Magic, and they've got to get themselves right. Um, they have had to cycle through lineups, and and you know, cr- there's a lot of reasons to criticize Jamal Mosley and some of his lineup decisions, but I will not question the logic that you want consistency. You want to go to lineups and playing groups consistently so that everyone understands what their role is and gets comfortable playing with the same players. That stuff matters. This isn't 2K where you can just kind of slap things together and it just works. Guys have to learn each other a little bit. And and that's part of the process we're going through right now. And hopefully within a few games of all these guys playing together, and I know we have a back-to-back Sunday, Monday, which could probably mean Markel and Jonathan Isaac may not play uh, for, for injury maintenance Monday in Dallas. Um, you hope that they start building that chemistry and we start getting that magical thing called rhythm, pen upon intended, that magical thing called rhythm. The Magic need to be healthy. It's been the story once again. Um, it, yes, I think Magic fans are annoyed that health is a story once again. I would agree that the Magic probably have too many injury projects or guys that are very, very, you know, very good when they play, but their availability is a question mark. That is something the Magic are going to have to solve or resolve in their next uh, in their next transaction window, whether that's at the deadline, whether that's that's in the offseason. It's definitely an issue to solve. We thought we were coming into the season with good health. Obviously, four games in the season, we had problems. You know, Markell went out. Then Wendell went out. Ran, random injury for Wendell. Random injury for Mark. You know, random but recurring injury for Markell. Um, you know, you got to start solving and playing for that, but... Right now, the Magic just need to get their guys back. I think we all understand when this team is fully healthy, when Jonathan Isaac's coming off the bench, when everyone slots into their roles, um, and that was the Magic of Sunday, Sunday's game against Miami, everyone just seemed to work. Everyone just seemed to fit exactly where they needed to be, and we saw this team at its best, at its peak. And so the question then is, how do we get back to that? And the way we get back to that is to get guys on the floor. Uh, I wish there was a more complex way to say it, but they got to get guys back on the floor. And hopefully the Magic are able to build some of that chemistry and practice over these next couple, over these two days. And then we'll begin to see that develop and form uh, on the court beginning Friday in Memphis. And, and as we get through this, 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 uh, again, this, this road trip, this road trip. Like I said, these seven games coming up, these seven games leading to the trade deadline are critical. If the Magic struggle while healthy, uh, and don't re- make progress kind of building this com- this this chemistry again, this rhythm, that could be a sign that, okay, we got to do something. Um, you know, I don't want to overstate the importance of these seven games, but these are the last seven games before the deadline. These are the last seven games before decisions have to be made. Deadlines spur action. And you do, ha- you do always remember kind of your last impression. So struggling in these next seven games, When this team is healthy, health is not going to be a huge excuse now. You know, maybe you got to give them some allowances to get their rhythm back, but health is not an excuse at this point. We got to see this team take that important step forward. That's good too for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Hit your tuner in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them based on podcasts to your podcast enabling this device related to the land of magic. Be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow us on Twitter at OmagicDaily. Also, be sure to check out the podcast on YouTube to see my smiling face. Um, if that's how you decide to uh, consume your podcast, uh, you can find that uh, by searching for Locked On Magic on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub. You can check me out there at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. Don't forget to check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. You can hear from local experts like me, as well as our national shows covering every league. Get the latest on the big stories in sports across sports. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel today. 
Like I said, we are going to get back to our trade deadline tour on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic. We've already hit Malcolm Brogdon, the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, our plan is to hit another point guard target that Magic fans really are obsessed with. We'll get the lowdown on Tyus Jones and the, the Washington Wizards, um, a, a trade partner that I think does have a little bit of legs. Uh, I, I the, the framework with Portland was not particularly strong. I, I, I think there's a better framework with, with, with Washington. So we'll get into some of those discussions on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic. But until then... For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.